In Paris, French police escort the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder to Leo Sartorius's lab. After nearly two years of searching and theorizing, the world may finally understand what happened on board Flight 447. The answer to what went wrong may be locked in these watertight containers. There was a lot of concern that we might take a false step that would lead to the loss of the information. One wrong move and a two-year search costing over $42 million will have been for nothing. Starting with a cockpit voice recorder, they carefully opened the protective casing, looking for the memory card inside. The worst thing would have been for the actual memory cards to be broken, physically broken. This isn't good. See the damage? We quickly noticed that there were small parts that were broken, so we weren't sure that everything was in working order. If technicians can't fix the cockpit voice recorder, they may never know what happened to the cockpit or even who was flying the plane. A close examination of the second box, the flight data recorder, brings better news. It's fine. No problems. I think we all looked at each other and said, it's incredible that they're in this state. It's incredible. We were able to read the data very quickly. While technicians try to repair the cockpit voice recorder, Sartorius carefully plots the data from the FDR. The FDR data reveals that the pitot tubes did, in fact, freeze. The pitot tubes freeze here. The frozen tubes produce erratic airspeed readings, causing the autopilot to shut off automatically. The pilot takes control of the plane. It warns the pilots very loudly. That can be a bit of a surprise, a bit of a shock. And it definitely was a shock to these pilots. And it was their reaction uh, to this warning, which was the key to everything else that followed. All crews are taught that a frozen pitot tube should clear itself in less than a minute. The pitots on the aircraft, they were only subject to the clogging for about 56 seconds. And after that, the airspeed readings were back to normal again. The pilot only needs to hold the plane steady and the problem will disappear. But he does not hold steady. Whoever was flying the plane pulled back and pitched the nose up instead. When the autopilot disconnected, the pilot in command changed the pitch of the plane. He climbs more than 2,500 feet. If you pull the nose of an airplane up, it's going uphill, it's going to slow down. Their speed dropped more than 90 knots in less than a minute. Raising the nose of the plane at high altitude put the plane into a stall very quickly. In an aerodynamic stall, the wings lose lift and the plane drops from the sky. It was the pilot's actions that led to the stall. They fell at more than 12,000 feet per minute. Inexplicably, the pilot continued to pull back when he should have been pitching the plane's nose down to gain speed and lift. The more you raise the nose, the more the lift will be destroyed. And that's what was happening to Air France 447. 